Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today, I'm going to take a quick second to talk about forge burners. Thanks for watching. Okay, here we are at the workbench, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a forge burner that I both designed and built quite some time ago. You can find the links to the videos, or the very early first videos I made, on actually making these. They were kind of like a slideshow presentation of each step. And I also have plans that you can purchase at my website of blacksmithpdfs.com. You can take and go over there, and it's essentially that slideshow presentation in a paper copy format. So this way you can have it on hand, and I believe it would be a resource to you. A lot of guys have built these burners. The thing I want to talk to you about today is to is the overcomplication of burners. You can make a really complex burner, but a burner essentially is very simple in principle, especially atmospheric burners. It is all a fuel to air ratio. That's all it is. As long as you can get enough air to supply to mix equally with the amount of fuel, you get a complete combustion, you get complete burn. And that's what you're wanting for efficiency. I get asked a lot about how long a burner will last or how long they can run a propane tank on a, on, you know, a two burner setup on my gas forges. And I'll go ahead and answer that question now. The answer to that is in my style burners that I've designed with two with two burners, you can get roughly about two to four hours of run time on a 20 pound cylinder. Does this mean the 20 pound cylinder is empty? No, it does not. It means that you put such a draw on that cylinder that it actually starts frosting up and when the temperature lowers in the tank of the propane tank, the LP or the propane gas, the liquid petroleum gas cannot gasify and so therefore it can't produce the pressure to even come out of the nozzle if you were to get it down cold enough. So that's why I recommend if you're doing two burners to have at least a 40 pound propane cylinder. That's just kind of my standard. I've went away from using barbecue cylinders. I know it's a little more cost for a 40 pounder, but you get a lot more run time out of them, you know, a full day. So that's the answer to that. The other thing I'm going to point out about burners is an atmospheric burner will never be as efficient as a forced air burner where you are supplying the oxygen by some other means, whether an air compressor or by a blower. Those are going to be able to be a lot more efficient for you. I could get into all the technical details of that, but you know I'm not the biggest genius when it comes to everything. I'll be the first to admit it, I am not the most knowledgeable on everything that there is out there. But I have done some stuff, and it works. So, there's that. The other part of a properly constructed burner, to take and have a burner and to take into effect, a point that I want to point out, is all burners need a flare. All of them do. The reason why is that they need to create, at the end of the nozzle, what they call a second burn. And it's essentially an eddy current where the flame itself ignites, it keeps the flame ignited. Otherwise, the pressure that's flowing out through here and the velocity will blow the flame. The flame will come off the tip and eventually blow itself out. When you put a flare on there, it allows those gases to expand rapidly and in one spot and that's what creates that dedicated flame that stays at the tip of your torch tip. So that is needed in a burner. In my propane design, my propane tank design, like I said, videos will be in the link in the description and at the end of this video, the K wool itself, the way I've positioned the burner, acts as the flare it acts as the flare. It's just simply an expansion point that the gases can expand rapidly and create those eddy currents to reignite that flame and have that regenerative ignition for the burner to work. 
If you don't have a thick enough K wool layer, the burner won't work. It'll blow out or it'll burn up inside the tube. And you don't want your burners to come back here and burn up inside the tube. That's bad. That's when things just start heating up and, you know, things look dangerous. So we don't want that. You want it to be burning out here. My design burners, all atmospheric burners, and I will say all atmospheric burners, need an air choke or an air gate. You need this so you can properly adjust the amount of inlet air to the amount of pressure of propane that you're sending down the pipe of the burner. If you do not have this air gate on there and it's running wide open with air, and then you have to take and use up extra propane to get a lit flame out at the end. Also, you're not creating a neutral flame, you're creating an oxygenized flame or an oxygenated flame, and then that's going to scale up your work pieces quicker. So if you guys are trying to build these burners or build your own gas forges to do things like Damascus work and things of that nature, that is something to take into effect. You cannot get a neutral flame without an air gate of some kind. You have to regulate both the pressure that's coming in of the fuel and the amount of air that's mixing with it to get a complete burn. Much of the same way of like the nozzles and the adjustment, the adjustment knobs on a torch. So that's just some quick tips about burners. Let me know if you have any questions for me down in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer them. If there's a bunch of them, I will probably just shoot another video to take and answer those specific questions in depth or in more detail. That's it for today about burners. Thank you all for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.